Hi, my name is Lewis and today I'm going to be showing you all about the live composite mode on the latest Olympus cameras. Live comp is a feature that allows you to effectively do a long exposure without worrying about overexposing the image. Now it does this by shooting a series of images continuously with the same exposure time and the camera combines all the images into a single composite but only the first image is used for the ambient light. This works perfectly for macro photography, product photography, even jewellery. Star Trails works perfectly for it as well which is one of my favourite types of photography. Let's head outside and I'll show you how I get my Star Trail photographs using this feature. Okay, so here we are. We're outside, the sun's gone down, it's nice and dark, we've got a clear sky so we can see the stars. I'm shooting with an EM1 Mark III and the 7-14. This is my favourite lens, really nice wide, pin sharp, also 2.8 aperture which will allow us to get as much light in as possible. Now, the reason I'm shooting on the EM1 Mark III is because it's nice and easy to find live composite. Now, if you're not on an EM1 Mark III, an EM5 Mark III or an EM1X, what you want to do is go into manual on the top, use the rear thumb dial, go all the way to the left and slow your shutter speed down. You'll get to 60 seconds, you'll get bulb, live time and then live composite. Then you'll be in the same position as what we're in here. On the EM1 Mark III, EM5 III and EM1X, you just go into the B mode on the top and then you have bulb, live time, live composite. It takes away those shutter speed settings and having to go right to the bottom. Okay, so we're now in live composite. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open the aperture to 2.8, paying close attention to the exposure meter on the bottom. You can set your ISO as normal by pressing OK. I'm gonna put that on 1250, just to give us a, you know, I, don't, I wouldn't want to go any higher than 1600 with this, um, but we want to try and get as much light in as possible. Now, live composite, you can't change the shutter speed on the rear thumb dial because it will take you out of live composite. So what we do is we press menu and you get an effective shutter speed setting. Now this will not dictate how long the camera goes for, what it will actually do is only change the brightness of the image. So for example, if you set it to half a second at an aperture of 2.8 and an ISO of 200, the brightness of the image will only ever be the same brightness as a normal photograph with those settings. So what I'm going to do here is just pop it up a little bit to two seconds and it's saying that I've got a plus 0.3 of a stop in terms of exposure compensation. Nice bright image. So that to me looks bright enough. I've got the foreground in, I've framed it so I've got a bit of foreground and the sky. Press shutter button once to prepare for composite shooting. This is a little message that pops up on screen just to give you a tip. Now it won't auto focus at this point, so don't worry. You just press it once and that will take your first ambient shot. Think of it like a background layer on a Photoshop layering system. Now it says ready for composite shooting. This is where you would move your focus point around. If you're on the later models with Starry Sky Auto Focus, you want to set that on now and then press the rear thumb um, ALAFL button and it will auto focus on the stars. If you don't, not to worry, put it in manual focus, put it on infinity and it says ready for composite shooting. Hit the button once and that's it you're away. It will start developing live on screen. You can leave it here for two and a half hours or six hours on the EM1 Mark III if you're plugged in. And if it does die, don't worry, it will stop itself just before it dies to save the image. If you set on half a second for the live composite shutter speed setting, it will refresh every half a second. Obviously any slower than that, if you do set it on something like 60 seconds, you are going to have to wait for that 60 seconds before you see anything on screen. So don't panic, just be patient. That's it. Leave it running. Come back in the morning, leave it in the garden if it's safe and see what results you get. I hope this has inspired you to go and take some live composite star trail shots. I'm going to hand you over to Dave now who will actually be able to show you how to get different types of photographs at home, indoors, if you don't have a clear night. Over to you Dave, thank you. Thanks Lewis, that's a really great way to use live composite. Now I'm going to show you all a slightly different way to use it, by painting with light on products and you'll see some of my quite nerdy subject matter which just goes to show that you don't need to have anything special at home to be able to do this. Let's go ahead and take a look at the menus now and see what we can come up with. Right, so here I am in live comp and I've set my aperture to f8 which is a nice depth of field for this kind of product photography. I'm going to just take a quick glance now at my super control panel make sure that everything's fine. So my white balance at auto and my ISO to 400 for this kind of light painting. 
I'll come out of that and press menu to go into the composite settings. Now the composite settings are going to allow me to choose a base shutter speed. For this kind of work, again I recommend about half a second. Uh, it'll give you plenty of feedback on how your image is going. Now it's time to turn off the lights and take our background composite shots. This is the first shot when you press the shutter button. It's going to be the exact same half a second amount of time. And then I now put a bit of light on my subject so that I can focus, remove the light and start shooting. This is where I'll start to gently blend in light from my light source. Now I use a really nice soft light source on the lowest power setting to start with because you can add light but you can't take it away. So it's really, really easy to get carried away. So just be cautious, use some distance, gently bring it closer and then paint it in where you think you need the light. And this is really good for filling the shadows on product photography shot like this one. You can give it a really nice sort of classy, high definition look uh, from something really, really simple. So I'm gonna speed up the process to the end of the shot uh, just until we get to the point where the final image is gonna be done. And I'll press the shutter one more time to stop shooting. And there we go, we're done. There's my final shot processed. I'm gonna press the play button now. We'll have a little look at how that came out. At a quick glance, this is looking nice. I've got lots and lots of detail in there. The shadows have come up really nicely. The highlights have come up really nicely. I think all round, not a bad picture at all. Even just a little bit of light in the lens there. So we'll bring that back and have a look at what the final image could look like. And there it is. After a little bit of editing, this is our final image. And it's not turned out too bad at all. And like I said, you can use anything that you can find around the house to do this. All you need really is a torch to be able to cast some gentle light on it. And if you do have any other light emitting sources, then you can play around to create some really cool special effects. Okay, so hopefully you enjoyed watching that and it's inspired you to go off and paint some products around your own home. Remember, it doesn't have to be anything fancy as you saw in my video. Stay safe, stay shooting, until the next one, bye for now. Okay, so there we have it. Thank you, Dave, for showing us what we can do on a gloomy day inside. If you do get a clear night, I know it's England, it's rare, but if you do get a clear night, now you know how to get a photograph of those stars. Let us know what photographs you get, drop us your image in the comments below, and if you do want a one-to-one -one for some further technical advice, please follow the link in the description to book a one-to-one -one with one of a Guru Sessions, whether it be me or Dave or another member of the team. Thank you very much, and we'll see you on the next one.